Good evening, I'm Jay, and welcome to another episode of Your Rabbit Guy. In a groundbreaking news story, a fresh growing occurrence is happening. We will send you to Jay, who is right on the site now. Uh, Jay, what can you tell us about this shocking event as it's growing? Yes, that's right, Jay. And as you can see, we have grass right on the side here. And as you look over here, it goes downhill right to grade. Yes, you heard it first right here, folks. Grass. It might just be growing in your backyard. We will keep you up to the second on the ups and downs as this is happening. In other news, we will look at modeling a site with sloping and changing elevations in Revit. Let's check it out. Stay tuned. In this Revit model, we'll be looking at placing a site layout on top of this residential home environment. Going to a view in the project browser. Under floor plans, I have a site plan already prepared, which is a top-down view with a set of reference lines for the outline of the site environment. In the ribbon, going to the massing and site tab under the model site panel, choose Topo Solid from the drop down list, and you have two options here. You can create it from an imported CAD file, or you can choose to sketch the outline. We'll choose Sketch, go into the Modify Create Topo Solid Boundary tab in the draw panel. I'm going to create boundary lines using the rectangle tool. From the outline corners of each of those reference planes, I'll create the outline shape here. Before finishing this, we'll look at a few options. You have a sloping arrow, which you can slope the entire grade all at once. In the properties panel, you have a drop down list where you can choose different types if available. You can set the level height of the topography by default, any elevation heights, and other options. Click the green checkbox to finish, and I can see it shows up here as a gray surface. We'll adjust that next. Clicking on the topo solid, go into the properties menu and choose edit type properties. Opens a dialog box where you can either duplicate the styles, rename them, and modify their structure and other properties. I'm going to duplicate this type and create a name called Greenfield Site. And come down here. Under Graphics, you can choose what the object looks like in a coarse detail level. I can change the color of that to a green color if you want that to look like grass. And you can choose the contours of the grade to be displayed here with different options. I'll just leave that as default for right now. Under Structure, choose Edit next to that. And right now it's just using a by category material, which is non-specific. I'm going to insert a new layer of material and create a layer of grass that is one inch. and the remaining portion will be a variable size. The top layer, click materials, and in the Revit materials browser, I'll type in grass at the top to search. You can see grass option here, and you can see what that will look like by modifying the graphics, color and appearance, can change a lot of options there. Under structure, click that surface and I'll change that to earth. And again, you have a couple of options with that as well. Currently a brownish color. The hatch pattern is using the earth fill pattern style automatically. Click OK and click OK again. And you can see immediately that that shows up as a green surface. 
going to a 3D view, I can see where that surface already has taken place on top of the model. And as I zoom in here, I can see that I already have a sidewalk concrete and a driveway concrete layer that is just created as a flooring condition. I'm actually going to take the site model and drop it down, say, one half inch. Just to show some type of reveal between the concrete and the grass. That could be any height. It could be a total four inches, uh, completely dependent on your design needs. Next, I'm going to click on the site topo surface or topo solid, go to a top down view orientation, and in the modify topo solid tab, shape editing panel, you have some options under modify sub elements. You have a choice for add points, add split lines. Choose Modify Sub-Elements, and you can see the outline show up as a light green dash line with green points at each corner. This gives you the ability to add elevation changes to all of the site positions. This is how we will add elevation changes to the site design. I first want to create some split lines where the slope will take place at different points coming across the driveway here and along the edge of this walk area. Next, I will add points to all of the edged corners of the outside structure of the home so that it keeps that as a flat plane when I modify the contours sloping up or down from that point. Now each of those points show up, and you can see as I select each of them, they already show the same elevation height as currently negative one half inch. I can select all of the outside edges. I can select all the outside edges of the site and change those by clicking on the elevation number, the elevation height in the modify sub elements tab or in the height offset from level in the properties. So all of those are the same option and any adjustments will affect every location. I'll change that to negative four inches and that will create the contouring from the residence down to the grade level. Let's in fact even make this a greater slope by saying it's a one foot drop. Currently as I look at an on side view of the building I can tell that the concrete areas are still in the air because they are not sloping with the grade. Just like with the topo surface layout, when you pick on the concrete area of this sidewalk, it also has a shape editing panel, and you can choose to modify sub-elements here as well. Modify sub-elements, and you can also see where it creates the outline in the dash green lines, and each point on the edges can be adjusted. I'll add a split line across this face here, where a break will occur after that point sloping down to the next segment. I'll pick the bottom surfaces down here and I'll set that to negative 11 inches to keep it one foot off the grade, or I'm sorry, one inch off the grade level. And as I tilt up, I can now see that that walk is grading or sloping down to the edge of the site. So just like with the topography surface, the concrete flooring surfaces have the same feature. I'll do this in each location. And now each of the surfaces are sloping down to the same point. You can take this to any degree of slope that you want. So for instance, if you wanted to have a raised mound in this area of the grass or site environment, simply select it and modify the elevation height of a certain area. You always have to make sure that you're isolating 
the surface with either a break line or split area. Even placing a single point in the middle of the space, you can see a relative elevation height as it's coming along the sloping grade. It's currently at this negative four inch and some change height. If I wanted to raise that, say, to two feet, it would just create a mounded surface up to that single point, in this case creating a pyramidal. And you can't even see all the contour lines show up. If for any reason you're ever unhappy with how the site layout is progressing and you want to start over, you can select the flooring or the topo surface, go to the modify tab, in the shape editing panel choose reset shape, it will remove any of the elevation changes and any of the sloping split lines and points making it into a flat surface once again. Where you can then start over from scratch. Any of the modifications that you make to the topo surface will continually update and modify the angular slope of the site overall. In the floor plan go into the edit type properties. I can change the contour display option to show contour lines. Let's go with every four inches. Looking at the site again, changing it back to a hidden line, I can see all of the contour lines that are showing up here and I can change how many contour lines show at different elevation sections. Clicking on the topo surface, go to the edit type properties, under contour display, edit that and change the uh, secondary contours to, let's go with every two inches. And you can see more topography lines show up. And you can even display interval lines at, say, every six inches, which show up as a slightly thicker line type. You can even go to the Massing and Site tab, Model Site Panel, and choose Label Contours. This allows you to draw a straight line across the site, displaying each elevation height across the contour lines. Simply adjust that line angle and it will change each point location where they're displayed. That elevation number will adjust immediately once the site elevation changes in any way. Obviously a large area like this will show many contours Lastly, you have a property line that you can add to the site as well. Go into the Massing and Site tab, Model Site Panel, choose Property Line. You can choose this to be created as a distance and bearing, such as you would get from a site surveyor, or you can sketch the outline as well. Choose a sketched outline, create a rectangle shape around the reference plane outlines that we currently are using, and click the green check mark to finish, and that shows up as thickened property lines to continue developing your site layout plan. Thank you for joining us for today's content in the Revit software on looking at site layout and design, various options for changing elevations and levels and sloping grading for the site layout design. This channel is sponsored by Imaginet Technologies. With over 20 years of experience and more than 100 industry experts, Imaginet is well equipped to assist with any needs for software, training, implementation, including Productivity Now, a video training resource for many types of industry leading software. Check out the available licensing packages at Imaginet.com. Contact Imaginet today and mention this channel to get a special offer. Check out our previous videos below. Comment below and tell us more information you'd like to see covered in the Revit software.